Hey guys, so I wanted to make a quick video, uh, very simple to follow about the ASI Air. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, made a video about it. So this is, I believe, the app as of 2022, and I'm going to show you how to simply uh, connect to everything and use the ASI Air to control your camera, telescope mount, and uh, focuser, filter wheel, I mean, everything you have. So uh, it's very simple, you will see, and uh, let's get to it. So on the first page, when, once you launch the app, uh, you have a bunch of uh, settings and options. So on the left, you have uh, your location and the date and time, which you can grab from your phone or you can input manually. Um, so make sure you have the right location and the right date and time. If not, you will uh, maybe slew to a target and it's going to actually slew to the ground. So make sure you have the correct setting there. Uh, on the right, you have mount. So make sure you have the correct mount in there. You have a huge list, so for me, uh, this is the Atlas EQG, so it's the same as the uh, EQ6R. So I'm going to pick EQ mode mount, which is the one that works at least for the Atlas here. But on uh, any mount you have, it should work. Um, make sure you have um, you know, the correct one in there. So I will just select EQ mode mount. I believe if you select EQ mode mount with Sky Safari, you should be able to uh, slew to any target using Sky Safari if you have the app on your iPad or on your iPhone. Next, uh, main guide scope focal length. So make sure you have the right one, of course. Uh, this is a mid 70 mm Apple F5. So the focal length is 344 mm. And I'm using an OAG, uh, so the ZW OAG. And when using the OAG, you have the same focal length as your main telescope. So um, I have the same number here. But if you do have a, a guide scope, make sure you have the correct number in there. Uh, the main camera, I'm using the 71MC, so uh, make sure, of course, you have the, the actual main camera in there. If you don't uh, pay attention, you might select your guide camera as a main camera, and that will be very ugly. You might have some really ugly stars. <laughs> and of course, guide camera, I'm going to select the guide camera I have, so I have the ASI 120 mini. Uh, right now, I'm using an OSC camera, so I don't have a filter wheel. Uh, if you do, uh, if you connect your filter wheel from the USB to either the ASI Air or the main camera, you should just select uh, ZW filter wheel in there. And for the EAF, which is the electronic focuser, uh, I do have one, uh, the ZW uh, EAF. So as you can see here, it's selected as just EAF. And click on enter. And you should hear uh, the connection made. And so this is the main dashboard of the ASI Air. On the top, you can see all the settings tabs and you can just select uh, whatever you want. The first thing I like to do is to go to the camera tab and make sure the gain is correct. So the gain of 100 for this camera is the medium gain, uh, well, 90 actually, 90 is the unity gain for the 71MC. Uh, and I, I like to activate the cooling. So up, once you activate the cooling, your camera is going to start cooling down. And you can select uh, your desired temperature there. Anti-dew is uh, interesting. I like to activate it since I've had some issues with dew in the past because of going back and forth in the house, in a warm house and outside in the cold. Um, so I do activate anti-dew. Then if you go through the tabs, you'll see a bunch of options um, for each specific item that you have. For example, this is the guide settings. So you can mess around in there and select whatever you want. For example, dither settings are pretty important. I like to do five pixel dithers every five pictures, uh, which I think is, is fine. So uh, dithering is activated on mine. So make sure it is on yours as well if you do want to, to dither. Then next, uh, the mount, it shows you the location and all that to so make sure it's all correct. And if you go down, you will see uh, that right now it's not tracking, which is normal. Uh, but once you start slowing to any target, it's going to automatically activate tracking for you. So don't bother with that. And then you can go into the Meriden flip settings if you want to. Um, if you want to make sure that your mount does a, a correct Meriden flip whenever your image passes the Meriden. Next is filter wheel. We don't have any right now. But in there you could select your filters and, and rename them. And EAF, the focuser, that you can select your uh, step size and all that backlash uh, and the temperature sets and autofocus options and uh, so you can of course take your time and go through those settings uh, yourself i just showed you mine really quick but um yeah that's, that should be pretty simple and the last tabs um, one is the sd card which you can clear whenever you want and the last one is just the info tab 
uh, showing you some information about the actual app and the ASI Air. Okay, so now um, if you look on the bottom here, there is a histogram and there is also the main information about the camera. Temperature right now is cooling down and uh, the gain is 90. And so we have two more areas in the dashboard that are very important. The left shows you um, things you can toggle on and off. So a histogram, for example, focuser uh, window, the guide window, which you can go in if you tap the actual guide window. And uh, the plate solve should be available later, and some tools. And on the right, you have the main button to take pictures on the right here, on the center, uh, the exposure time over here, the bin, and on top, the pre well, the, the mode. So right now, I'm in preview mode. So if I take a picture right now, it's just going to show me uh, a preview picture of one second of the current uh, sky, wherever it's pointed. So right now, it's around Polaris somewhere. And if you go to actually click on preview, you can change also you know, focus mode, uh, polar alignment, auto run, which auto run is the one where you want to uh, to use to actually take real pictures uh, and save them plan live and video and here on the little arrows this is your mount control so let's pretend we want to go to um, to a bright star so i like to go to a bright star first so i can focus and then i like to uh, image whatever i want so um, a bright star right now maybe aldebaran i think right behind me so i'm going to select that and if you go on the right here on the bottom right you can go to and so as soon as you do that, uh, now your mount is officially tracking, so um, that's good. And so right now it's going to Aldebaran. And what it's going to do next is it's going to automatically take a picture to plate solve. So as you can see here, it's not centered, so it's going to try again and uh, correct itself until it is centered. So I'm not even polar aligned right now, I'm like really roughly aligned, um, so it might fail a few times which is completely normal, and let's see if you can find it. So it tells me now that it's centered, so let's take a, a quick picture to see uh, if it's actually correct. And see we have Aldebaran, so it's a bright star in our frame now. Um, so that's how you, you go to a, a, any object or star really easily using this tab here. Now. To focus on this, to, before your image, of course, you have to focus. If you have an ENF, you can easily focus on this star, uh, either manually or automatically. So if you go to focus on the tab here, you can manually, uh, so you can take like several exposures non-stop and use the tab on the left here to go up or down in uh, the focus range, uh, either slowly or fast by tapping there. So fast means you go like, in more more steps uh, in a row. but. Um, the, the easiest way is to just stop that right now and go to AF, which is autofocus. And from there, just click on, well, tap on play. And by doing that, it's going to automatically uh, take several pictures uh, and play with the focuser itself until it finds the perfect, I mean, the, the best possible uh, pinpoint stars. So I don't think, I don't know if it's going to work because the light is so bright here, uh, but we'll give it a try and see if it works. Usually it's not too, too, too slow, it's usually pretty fast, uh, but what you want to see is a V-curve. Uh, so what we hope to see here is a, the shape of a V, uh, and the bottom one will be the, the most focused uh, point. So as you can see here, it's doing kind of a V-curve, it's going back up. So it goes all the way down and then all the way up. On the left, uh, you can see the star size, so the, the lower the better, of course. Usually you want to aim for like under two uh, at best. Okay, so as you can see here, it says autofocus succeeded. So I can just exit that and we should be properly uh, focused right as of right now. Uh, if you go back to preview, take a picture, uh, you will see that all your stars should be pinpoint and nice looking. And now uh, comes the, we only have like two steps left if you want to image. So let's pretend you want to image, well, let's be original, Orion, uh, the Orion Nebula. So let's go to uh, the Orion Nebula and you obviously just tap on uh, go to and now it's going to slew to it. 
and it's going to do just like before. It's going to take a picture and uh, auto-center itself using plate solving. And once we do that, uh, all we have to do left is to uh, start the auto-guiding followed by the auto-run. All right, perfect, it's right there. So that's a, a nice looking uh, nebula for one second. Now, uh, before we launch the um, guiding, let me quickly show you the auto run uh, tab here. So if you go to auto run, I'm going to clear this from last time. So this is a very simple way to uh, to launch your sequence, right? So on the left you have target M42, which you can name whatever you want. Uh, group by slot means if you have several filters, it will take each uh, it will take all the pictures from one filter at a time. Uh, if you uncheck that, it will, it will do like one picture from this filter, then next filter, then next filter, then go back to the first filter, which I think is a pain. Uh, and a maiden flip has to be activated if you want your uh, scope or your amount to flip uh, if it hits the, uh, the meridian. On the bottom here, you can select to shut down the ASI air if you want to at the very end. Uh, or you can select to uh, go uh, tell the mount to go home, which I like to, to have on. And then, so the main thing here is to click or tap on the plus sign and for us it's going to be very simple because we have an OSC camera and so select light frame, bias frame, flat frames or dark frames we're going to select light frames exposure time, let's do like for example 60 seconds and you can repeat that how you know, however much you want so let's go with 30 for example and then bin number one okay, and there you have it uh, for some targets or for different filters you can have another one and for example, for the Ryan Nebula, let's do a, maybe like a, a five second exposures uh, times maybe 20 for the core. And now we have two. So uh, that's a, pr a, pretty, a pretty cool thing um, to have. As, I mean, it's very simple to, to create your own sequence. And now you can just go back and if you click on uh, the main button here, it will just start the sequence itself. Now, before we do the guiding, if you go to a, a nebula or a galaxy, for example, but you don't like the framing, uh, because there is not really any way to tell uh, the app to, to, to go to the specific uh, center. So what you can do is either go back to preview and use the arrows from the mount here to go up, down, la left or right until you like it. Or an easier way is if, for example, you want to center uh, the running mandibular instead of M42, you can just hold, uh, tap and hold wherever you want and then tap again and it's going to go center exactly where you tapped and held your finger. Um, that's the easiest way you can do uh, to center however you want. So for example, if you have two galaxies in your frame and you want to be centered in between the two, or if you have a, a huge nebula and you don't like how it's centered on your, on your screen, then you can easily uh, do that using uh, your, your finger. So uh, as you can see here, it's going to update with the centered uh, frame. Up oh, there you go. So that's a, a great way to do it. So lastly, uh, before you launch the sequence, make sure you're guiding. So for uh, guiding, uh, all you have to do is go to the guide tab and select, uh, well, you can use the double arrows here to um, start taking frames and then select a star that you want and then all you have to do is just tap on the target there. Uh, if you use the info tab, you can clear the last uh, calibration. But if you tap on the target here, it's going to calibrate and uh, automatically start guiding, which is great. And you can toggle the graph on and on using the tab, uh, using the button on the left here, uh, which is great. So as you can see here, we have some great guiding so far. And uh, it's working well, even with a crazy light. <laughs> okay, and so lastly, uh, to launch your sequence, once again, go back to... Uh, auto run and if you just tap on the big button here it's going to automatically launch a sequence just confirm that you actually want your mount to go home afterwards uh, i'll just confirm as usual and now uh, since it's already guiding and it's already uh, plate solved on the target it is already uh, imaging right now as we speak so we'll have the first uh, frame in just about 45 seconds uh, and you can toggle on the, the guiding tab from here as well uh, which you can move around if you want to and um, that's pretty much all we need. If you let the ASI Air just image all night, uh, it will refocus automatically depending on your settings in the, uh, the focuser. And uh, it should meridian flip uh, correctly once the target goes past the meridian. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So that was a, a very quick and easy video showing you a quick walk around of the ASI Air. 
as of right now, as of 2022. So hopefully it's great. One last thing I did not mention is on the bottom here, you can play with the histogram. Uh, so you can really stretch as much as you want. As you can see here, um, well, we're gonna have the, the new picture coming in in just two seconds here. Let's see. I'll just tap on auto for now. And so this is the first frame we have. Well, actually, there we go. The first frame, which of course is completely blown out thanks to the crazy light I have in front of me. Uh, but if you play with the histogram, you can fix that. You should not have an issue with that because you don't image with a, a crazy light in front of you. So um, yeah. So I hope you guys uh, liked this video. It was quick and easy, hopefully. And uh, if you just got an ASI Air, uh, hopefully this was helpful to you. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time for more tutorials and class guys.